<laughs> Which is luckier? Having a near-death experience and surviving, or just not having a near-death experience at all? If the plane you were travelling in suddenly exploded in the air, sending everyone on board 33,000 feet to their deaths, and you were the miraculous only survivor, are you lucky or unlucky? I mean, yeah, it's pretty fortunate you survived, but to be honest, exploding in the air and falling thousands of feet to the ground doesn't sound like something I would ever want to happen to me, you know? It's not quite the same as winning the lottery. But that's exactly what happened to the subject of today's video. Well, the plane exploding part, not the winning the lottery part. It would be pretty weird if I made a video about someone winning the lotto and opened the video up talking about an aviation disaster. No, what makes today's subject interesting is the fact that they survived the highest fall without a parachute. Actually, there's quite a lot of interesting and unusual incidents in this story, so let's get into it. Vesna Vulevic was born in 1950 in Belgrade in Yugoslav, Serbia. Growing up, she loved the Beatles, which drove her to the UK to improve her English, although she eventually returned to Belgrade at her parents' request. Upon her return, she met up with a friend who had recently become an air hostess. Her friend explained she had just come back from London and showed off her uniform. Admiring it and wishing she could visit London, Vulevic decided she too would become an air hostess. Vulevic had a history of low blood pressure, and knowing that this would likely result in her failing the required medical examination, she drank an excessive amount of coffee beforehand and successfully joined JAT Yugoslav Airlines in 1971. In 1972, Jap Flight 367 was flying from Stockholm to Belgrade, with stopovers in Copenhagen, Denmark and Zagreb, Croatia. When the flight arrived in Copenhagen, the secondary crew boarded the plane. Vulevic was part of this second crew, although she was not supposed to be. The airline had mistakenly assigned her to this flight after confusing her with another stewardess of the same name. I'm guessing Vesna was a much more common name in Yugoslavia than it is here in Ireland. At around 3.15pm, the McDonnell Douglas DC-9 took off with Vulevic, four other crew members and 23 passengers. About 45 minutes later, as the flight was above Czechoslovakia, the plane suddenly exploded and tore apart. As the cabin depressurized, those on board were blown out into the icy air, where they fell 33,000 feet to their deaths. All except Vulevic, who was pinned down by the food cart in the tail end of the craft. The wreckage came down in a heavily wooded and snow-covered area near a small village. A local villager, Bruno Honka, rushed out to the wreck, where he heard a single voice screaming amidst the chaos. He ran over to Vulevic, the lone survivor from the 28 on board. Fortuitously, Honka had been a medic in World War II and was able to administer first aid before rescuers arrived. Vesna Vulevic spent the next few days in a coma. She had a fractured skull, two broken legs, three broken vertebrae, a fractured pelvis and several broken ribs. When she awoke, she found she was paralysed from the waist down, but she was alive, despite having been through an explosion and a 33,000 foot drop, making her the record holder for surviving the longest fall without a parachute. Her survival was credited to her entrapment within the craft, which crashed into heavy woods and thick snow, cushioning the impact. Doctors also said that her low blood pressure had caused her to quickly pass out when the cabin depressurized, likely saving her heart from bursting on impact. The cause of the explosion, although difficult to verify, was officially attributed to a briefcase bomb that detonated in the baggage compartment. Croatian nationalists were blamed for the attack, although no arrests were ever made. Vulevic eventually regained control of her legs and was able to walk again, albeit with a permanent limp due to the damage done to her spine. During her recovery, her hospital room was placed under 24-7 police protection, as it was feared the bombers may wish to finish the job. I feel like if I bombed a major airline and got away with it, I probably wouldn't risk it all to hunt down the lone survivor. I don't think that's generally how terrorist attacks pan out. 
When news of her story broke, Vesna Vulovic became a celebrity in Yugoslavia and was regarded as a national hero, which, I mean, I get it, but it's not like she did anything particularly heroic. She was just kind of there. I feel like the hero title should probably be awarded to the rescuers, you know, people who actually made conscientious decisions rather than just had events happen to them. Of course, Vulovic's survival is absolutely astounding. The villager who had saved her life, Bruno Honka, had a grand daughter six weeks after the event who was named Vesna in Vulovic's honour. Amazingly, once she was recovered, Vulovic wanted to return to her work as an air hostess. You'd think experience in such a traumatic event that nearly killed you and left you with life-changing injuries would probably put you off flying, but Vulovic had no memory of the incident whatsoever and was happy to return to the sky at the next possible convenience. Jat Airlines declined her return as an air hostess, realising it was probably in their best interest if customers weren't constantly reminded of their famous air disaster by having the only survivor on the flights. Instead, the airline gave her a desk job negotiating freight contracts. With her love of travel undamaged, Vulovic remained a regular flyer and she was often recognised by passengers who wanted to sit next to her. Although that was probably more of a safety precaution than an affectionate gesture. In 1985 in London, the Guinness Book of World Records recognised her as the world record holder for surviving the highest fall without a parachute. Her reward was presented to her by Paul McCartney of the Beatles. Sort of sick when you think of it. The Beatles seem to be kind of the motivating factor for her love of travel, which arguably led to her ending up in the disaster. For all we know, they could have been directly involved. They've done worse. Vulovic continued working with Jat Airlines until the early 1990s, when she was fired for participating in anti-government demonstrations against the Serbian president Slobodan Milosevic. She avoided arrest because the government were hesitant to imprison someone who was regarded as a national hero. She later campaigned for democracy and Serbia's entry into the European Union. Slobodan Milosevic was ousted from government in 2000 and put on trial for war crimes committed during the the Yugoslav Wars. Vesna Vulovic spent her later years alone in her apartment in Belgrade. Now a divorcee, Vulovic declined most of the many interview requests sent her way, claiming she was tired of discussing her fall and did not consider herself lucky to have survived. The fall, she said, had ruined her life, leaving her injured, unable to bear children and suffering from survivor's guilt, as well as the lives of her parents, who were brought into financial hardship in the wake of Vesna's medical treatment. In 2016, friends had become worried for her well-being after they had not heard from her in a while. In a search of her apartment on the 27th of December, her body was found. Vesna Vulovic had died four days earlier at the age of 66. A surprisingly depressing ending for what was a pretty thrilling story up to that point. But I suppose we have the answers to our opening questions now. You're not exactly lucky for surviving a near-death experience. I suppose when I think of it now, most who survive these scenarios are left with some sort of lasting damage, whether it be physical injuries or mental trauma. I entered this story with a sort of cheerful naivete, but now that we've heard it in its entirety, I can say never listen to the Beatles. And also subscribe.